Right now, we're here with Emily Spikes, painter in Acadiana. Emily, where are you actually from? I am from right here in Lafayette. I'm a little girl. Okay. Been here all my life, born I, and raised. I just wanted to make sure, because sometimes people are not from here. Yeah, no. But the, the good people are, right? The best people are. <laughs> well, I don't know. That art, that, that comedian is, is certainly not from here. That everybody keeps talking about. Oh, yeah. The... <laughs> Asshole. Yeah, no, not. No, I'm him. just joking. I don't. I don't even want to bring him up. He's not worth the time. No, I agree. <laughs> Wait, I agree. I have seen more of your art on Instagram than than the majority of other crazy posts I see on a regular basis. And I was like, man, I gotta do something with it. I gotta do a Q and A with her. She's awesome. Man, so, that makes me feel so good. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> doing a great job. And um, thank you, thank you. I really, I really think it's cool, and I think if no one found you yet, they need to find you because you're doing oh. some really cool stuff. And your your painting, your paintings are cool. Like they, they give people. I think they they remind them of something that made them feel good or made them feel inspired. Like you know, you're painting a lot of really cool, you know, things from movies and things, just reminders of stuff in life. Right. Right, and that's what I try to do. You know, I really want to kind of evoke a feeling of nostalgia in someone when they look at my work. No, so. I think it's cool. Um, I, I, the first question I have is, do you consider your artist yourself an artist or a painter? Um, I guess the short answer to that would be both. You know, um, I can paint mindlessly, but most of the time, painting is a means to an end, to an artistic goal. So you can be just a painter without being an artist. And obviously you can be an artist without being a painter. You can work in another medium. But, you know, paint is just a medium. It's about what you do with the paint and the time and the message that you're really trying to send, you know? No, I, I, I completely understand. Yeah. Um, number two, I, how do you come up with new ideas? Uh, you know, I could give like a typical artist answer, like I'm inspired by the world around me, but, uh, I, you know, in truth I am, I think at this point in my life, I'm kind of a starving artist and, you know, for a long time, up until very, very, very recently, no one at all really knew about me. And so I think in painting a bunch of pop culture icons, I'm kind of looking for something that they all share, like what makes these people memorable? Like. I look at I look at some of my favorite pop culture icons and I think, you know, why do I like them so much? What what makes them so significant to me and what has made them have that longevity? You know, what makes them popular over the course of decades? Why do we still love these people today? What common trait do they all share? So that's that's where I get my ideas, is just the people and the characters that inspire me and that I think have really had a significant impact on pop culture, you know, like kind of a, how do I do that? How, how can I relate to them in that way? What, what makes them so special and so noticeable and so timeless and classic, really? Right. Yeah. What, what, what is, I guess you paint a lot of things, quite a few things. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> people that have virtual, I, I mean, do you find that people, you know, when they want to purchase something, because you do, you're doing prints too. I mean, you're doing everything. Yeah. So, like, do you find that artists really, I mean, I, I guess, when did, I, well, the question is, when did you start? When did you start painting? Because that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I started when I was in high school. I had to take an elective my freshman year, so I chose art because I thought it would be easy. But when we got to the painting section of things, you know, right before school ended, I fell in love with it. And, you know, I didn't take it seriously probably until right after my freshman year of college. I actually dropped out of college my freshman year, and I, of course, went back later. I'm still in school right now, but... When I dropped out, I was kind of looking for something deeper, and I was, one, looking for a way to make ends meet, you know, like, what odd jobs can I do? What things can I do to make money? And painting was painting was part of that, and so I kind of just took it and ran with it. Like, when I found out that a few people were willing to buy my stuff at least, and my friends and family were so supportive of it, that's when I kind of was like, okay, like, let's try this. Let's do this. Let's see what I can do with art. So, you know, if you want the technical answer, it was, 
I started when I was 14, so we're coming up on nine years now, but I've really been serious about it for the last five years, I would say. So you did this by complete accident. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, never, I never, if you had asked me when I was like 10 years old, you know, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I never would have said artist. I that that was just never, that was never a thing in my mind. But when I kind of realized that I had, you know, a knack for it, I guess, for lack of a better word, I was like, you know, let, I can probably make something of this, and, and I'm, I'm still trying to so, this day. What did you want to be when you were 14 years old? I, have I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> and I think still, yeah. like, other than artists, I have no idea. Um, I could see myself being maybe, like, a therapist, but Wait, I don't so know. Maybe, now that I've maybe, art, like, a what? A therapist, like a psychologist. Okay. I love listening to people's problems and, okay. like, telling people about my own problems, so. <laughs> well, that, you're rare. <laughs> For what that, that's, that's, that's definitely not something a lot of people like. Yeah, so, no, not at all. <laughs> and I find that sometimes a lot of the, the people who are helping other people are just as crazy as the other people. So, so it's, it, it is an interesting thing, and I think we need more psychiatrists that can actually help people. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, I agree. <laughs> and not just with prescriptions. I have to say that. So. Yeah. No, um, I'm joking. But, no, I, you know, it, it, when you said that, like, well, I don't know when I was fit, because today I meet people that are 40 that still don't know what they want to be when they get older. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. And it happened. It does happen. Um, another question. What is your favorite color pattern? Uh, choose your favorite three colors. My favorite three? That's so hard because, honestly, when people ask me my favorite color, I just say rainbow. Because I think it changes every day. Um, you know, some days I'm super, like, aggressive and red, yeah. bright-ass red is my favorite color. But um, if I had to narrow it down all time, I'm going to go with teal, burnt orange, and just sunny yellow. Like, bright, energetic, happy colors. Yeah. Not, yeah. I, I, I'm surprised you didn't say blue, but teal is in there. So I, I, a lot of you, when you look at Emily's art, you, you see every color and it, it's yeah. coming at you like a hundred miles an hour. You can, and, and I have to ask this as a question because it's something I noticed about your art. Um, mm -hmm. what, do you do a before art meditation? You know, I used to, I used to, uh, just before I even had a studio, I sit in this room that my boyfriend and I have in our house and it's, we have like these bright tie dye tapestries everywhere, and I, I kind of sketch out ideas and listen to some really loud music. But I think since then, it's it's become kind of more. I don't want to say impulsive, but maybe impromptu. Like I kind of I come up with my idea the day before, and then when I'm ready to go, I go. Um, you know, the only meditation that I do or kind of thought process is like music. Music is my biggest thing um actually for probably about a year <laughs> before every painting session i would listen to white rabbit by jefferson airplane and it just like got me going for some reason and i felt like that's when i did my best work was when i listened to white rabbit <laughs> i know that's crazy but it, i mean it's no, just, whoa, it's, it's what it was really not at all i do the same thing <laughs> i can't yeah. do anything not listening to music before yeah and if i no, do i can't nothing I'm not going to be as happy as if I did. So, I'm here. That is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, I don't know what it means either, but I do know that, um, you know, I, I do know it has a lot to do with what comes out and how it comes out and, and, and what, what uh, your brain yeah, is I mean, I think the music you listen to when you're working has such a strong yeah, influence. True, final yeah. product. Absolutely right. Um, and, and, and it also has a lot to do with the fact, you know, if you, like, I walk around with this thing in my ear all the time, and people are like, what is in that in your ear? And I go, music. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, doesn't matter what time. Yeah, they That's look at me and they go, what do you mean? And I, and I go, well, basically, like, sometimes, you know, when you're arguing with some, if somebody comes up to you with an aggravation or had, having a bad day, like, if you're listening to something you really like, you can handle them a completely different way absolutely yeah and, and they'll look at you like i did not piss him off at all like 
it, it, and it's almost like they get mad about that, but it's true. Like, the, I, I find that, you know, I ask you that question because I go to many art shows and I look at a uh -huh. lot of art and photography. And whenever I'm there, I'm always like, what were they thinking? Yeah, absolutely. So, because, yeah. It, I mean, it all differs so much. Well, not only that, like, some of it's kind of really, some of it's kind of dark, so, you know, some of it's not. But but I look right. at your art, and it makes me feel good. So I well, know that you were feeling good when you painted it. You absolutely. Know? And you know what? I'm glad to hear that, because that's really what I try to get across. It's like, I just want people to feel good. I want them to feel happy when they well, look at my stuff. Emily, I mean, to, you know, not only that, you know, you have so many generations of people that look at your art and they might recognize one out of 20 because they might right. not be so savvy with the movie scene or the music scene or the pop culture scene. And the one that they do see, they might fall in love with it so much, you might inspire them to go watch a movie. Yeah. So that's, that's another thing I like about your art. I think it's cool that way it'll get people going somewhere. Go, hey, you know what? That dude that don't know how to say, hey, want to go on a date? Hey, why don't we rent that movie and see it? And we'll understand why she painted it. Exactly. You know, it's kind of finding that common ground in a way. You know, like, what what is something that all people can relate to? And you're right. It can, it can have different implications in daily life. Like you said, like, maybe some guy who doesn't know how to ask a girl on a date, like, hey, let's watch this movie. Let's watch Stranger Things together. You know, like, right. whatever it may be. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Definitely. you know, it's uh, Emily Spikes and chill instead of Netflix. She'll get you. Yeah, oh, hey, movies. I think that's just the new official thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's cool. Um, okay, another question. Why do you play music in the room that you're paying in? Oh my God. Or is it always in your ears? Absolutely. No? Okay. Like, I, it either has to be blasting over the whole room, or if I have to have my, have to have my headphones on, it has to be, like, almost busting my eardrum. I love music. Kind of like you said earlier, I can't, like, do things without music. I can't study without music. I can't do the dishes without music. Like, I can't, I'm nothing. I can't get ready to go out without music. It's, it's such a part of my life, and you know, I've always said that, like, visual art and music go hand in hand. And, again, like yeah. what you said earlier, you know, you can look at an artist's work and it's so dark and it's just like, what kind of place are they in? What kind of music do they listen to? And, like you said, you look at my work and it's, it's bright and it's energetic and it's happy. And that's, that's what I try to listen to. Very rarely will you hear me listening to, like, dark, sad, moody music. No. I love, I love Led Zeppelin and I love disco and just every kind of music that just makes you right. want to dance it's always on in my studio yeah right. no i i think it's i think it's cool i and, and i'm not saying that look some of the darker colors some of the so you can tell you can kind of look at art and tell what people were thinking <laughs> or what was yeah. going on. I, I, I can't because i've seen too much of it i've studied it for years i mean so like, yeah. you know i i took all of the art classes so I, yeah. I, you know, they, they forced me to do stuff. I, I couldn't even believe we did. So right. I'm, I'm glad. Right. And today I'm glad they did. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely been an element that has helped me in my life and not only physical work. So right. uh, our teacher, right. if you're listening, you helped me, even though you probably didn't think so. <laughs> right. So, right. Hey, so, um, it's everything to me. Well, do you. You, I mean, you, do you own a fan brush? I have to ask you that. Do I own a fan brush? I do own a fan brush. And you know what? I used to use them way more often than I do now. But you know what? Because you said that, next time I'm I'm having a tanning session tomorrow, I think I might bust out the fan brush. It's a great brush. Look, I have one from years ago. And, and, and I got to tell you, it was not easy to use. Like, Bob Ross, like, sold more fan brushes than anyone I've ever met. But with his little trees. Bob Ross is superhuman, so we don't, we don't know what's up with that. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Nobody even knows yeah. what a fan brush is if you never paint it. Yeah. Brush, so, like, <laughs> like they, they're like, what? Um, fan brushes make trees, people. Then you turn yeah, it around I... and you make the stem of the tree. 
<laughs> no, I don't. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure I use fan brushes incorrectly. I'm pretty sure I use a lot of my brushes incorrectly, but and I used to really to like that. to take fan brushes and just like go up and down with them and just like make yeah. lines with them. I don't, Con- you know, I don't know if that's how you use it, but. Right. Continue to do whatever the hell you want with your brushes because th- that it keeps people. It keeps if it keeps you painting, it doesn't matter what they say. Don't. Th- I'm all about not following rules. So, you know, the ones that count maybe, but the ones that get you inspired to build stuff, f that. Right. They, right. They don't. Right. Like, li- literally, keep doing what you're doing. You know, break Thank it in you. Half. I will. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just keep doing it. But, um. Is there anything you want people to know about you? Um, you know what? I have a very, very important message, and this is particularly geared towards other people my age, people in their early 20s. Uh, I do not have my life together. I am, like, the amount of people, like, my friends or the people that I don't see too often to say, oh my God, I see your art and you're doing so well and I see you doing this and I see you doing that. And it's just like, I think I'm really good at forming that facade, but I am just like every other person in their 20s or their 30s or their 40s. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow or the next day. I think art is pretty. We're back now. AT&T dropped the call. So we're going to have to make sure, make sure we're good. I'm saying that on purpose because I have Verizon. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, um, but but we were were asked the question, what do you want people to know about you? Yeah. Um, You know what? And I kind of want to direct this specifically to people that are around my age, you know, in their early 20s. But I guess this can apply to everyone because we were talking a little bit earlier and we were kind of saying, you know, we meet people in their their 60s that still don't know what they want to do but I do not have my life together like I I, you know I talk to my friends and I talk to my extended family and people that I sort of kind of know and they always like oh my god like you seem like you're doing so great you seem like you really know what you're doing and it's just like I am winging it like all the time and I think I've gotten really good at maintaining that facade of I'm totally put together and I totally know what I'm doing when the reality is like I take it day by day. And I think, I think I just want everyone else to know and anyone who thinks that I really have my life together (laughs) that I don't and that I'm just like everybody else, you know, I'm just taking it day by day. Yeah. Emily, you're just better at writing it down and dictating it, documenting it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you bring up something that I talk about all the time and in other areas because we do a lot of other stuff like but like I, I help a lot of people that help other people. So okay. we talk about this all the time. They, they, everyone's biggest problem is they think they're not doing something. And, right. And I, I, I'm you're saying that because you probably get, hey, you're so together and you're like, really, I'm just being me. And, and, and that's exactly I feel the same way. And the thing about it is, is if I tell people this all the time, what do you need to do? Go find a notebook and write down what you want to be. Because exactly until you decide that you want to do that, I don't it doesn't even have to be a notebook it can be a napkin. So, you know, right. everybody talks about walk ons here, right? Walk on started on a napkin. Hey, you know what? That was his business plan because he wrote it down, but he had to make the decision to write it down. And the biggest problem I see is that people don't write a damn thing down about No, they don't. They're so busy writing about other stuff and other experiences for other people that they don't write anything for their own life. And Right. And And it's, it's true. It's so funny you say that because actually, and I'm looking at it right now in my studio, I have a huge notepad it's like it's like a two foot by four foot notepad and I just every week I write down like my weekly goals like hey what do I want to do Monday what do I want to do Wednesday like what do I want to get accomplished and I think that's so important I'm a big to-do list person I love the feeling of like you said writing down a goal and then when I accomplished it check it off like you're Right. right that is so important and not enough people do it yeah they don't do it at all that's why right. they don't do anything because it's like, 
you know, hey, if all you do all day is drink beer and smoke weed, that's what you do. But you even you right. have, you even have to do something to get that. Right. So, you know, you're just you're just in that in that realm of doing that same old thing you do all the time. Change it up a little bit and write something down. You might do that other thing too with it. Exactly. You just gotta try. <laughs> just like, make the attempt. Yeah. I don't mean to throw all that all up in your interview, but I, I can tell that you get it too. I get it all the time. People are like, man, you're right. always so busy and all this stuff. You know, and I'm like, it's because I'm bored, people. Like, right. Like, like I'm just bored. really good at filling my time. Like that. That's it. Yeah. That's and, all it is. You know, and once you do seven different careers, you have to figure out how to manage that. Try and not, you grow from it. Yeah, but but managing time is definitely a, 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 it's a definitely a hard thing to do. Like like Absolutely. Emily, if somebody called you up and said, "Hey, I want a painting right now." Okay? And you just sold it and and you you they're like, "You know that, you know, that's a $400 in your pocket." situation but you what would you do like okay look give me i need 24 hours like you, you have to be realistic right you know? and that's you know i think that's a big part of what people don't understand that's a huge struggle that i encounter doing business with people is like i don't think a whole lot of people really realize the time that goes into creating art and that's the reason why it's so expensive or so much more expensive than people are expecting right. is because like Dude, like, I can't turn this out in, in 24 hours. I mean, depending on what it is. But it's just like, you got you got to give me a notice, you know? I can't I, I can't just snap my fingers and it's done. This, yeah. this takes time. Well, snap your fingers is, is, a, is a print. You want that print? You buy it now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and what a lot of, another thing is, like, people want a painting, but they're only willing to pay for a print. And it's just like, you got to... Gotta make your expectations a little bit more realistic yeah. with that. That's where Emily's got her own layaway plan. Oh yeah, totally. Almost no, I'm, just, never did. I'm, gotta, I'm saying that because <laughs> I don't see a lot of layaway plans all up in the art world, but I'm telling you, y'all should have it. <laughs> y'all Honestly, that would that would probably be smarter. I know a lot of artists do fifty yeah. percent down at the time of uh at the time of booking, but I don't know. That's something I should look into. Layaway. Right yeah, I, I would. I would. You know, I I would, because people will buy more art. I mean, you know, it, some people have to have that piece. You know, like, right, it's just right. How it and works. and I want them to have that piece because you know I gotta eat. I gotta pay my, pay my utilities. But yeah. we could work something out. Well, and 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 that's the thing, you know. And for if you don't want that layaway plan, she's got that print. So exactly. Th this is definitely an interesting Q and A. It, it turned into self help uh, one hundred and one plus like uh, interesting brush strokes. So no, yeah, um, everything music, fan brushes, etc. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have to know. Well, I, and I don't want to do that. I don't. I, don't, I was gonna say, who is your, Where do you get your paint in in Acadiana? Like, is there a place that you go to in Acadiana? Like, if you run out of something, like I gotta get it down. Is there anything? Oh like my that? god! I wish there was the little local mom and pop shop that sold Liquitex, but as far as I know, there aren't any. And if anyone hears this and knows of one, please, please point me in their direction because I like to shop local, but uh, no, no, I'm I'm real basic and I'm a slave to corporate America. I shop at Michael's. Yeah, but that's local. Is it? Yeah. I mean, like to me, Kraft? it's local because you know th there is no place local that sells paint. Because when I have when I need paint for something, you know, I mean, I, I, the last time I needed paint, I have a painting in my room. I had this, somebody was moving it and they messed up a part of it, so I had to match mm -hmm. the paint. I had to do all this stuff, and the guy was like, "Dude, I'm so sorry." I was like, "You know what? I haven't done this in years. It's gonna be positive for me. It's gonna be good." Right. Right. So I, I mean, and so that's actually where I went. That's actually where I went to do. I had to buy two different kinds of paint to do the mix. So it was, it was, it was interesting. But no, I, I get it. That, yeah. That's what I meant. Like where you, you know, because there's two markets yeah, no. in Acadiana, and, and there's one that sells paint. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> but I'm, yeah, no, Michael's by TJ Maxx. 
right. off Johnson. It's my place. It's my second home. Yeah. No, I, I, I was just curious. I was just curious because some people, you never know, you know. I mean, I, I remember Hobby. I think Hobby Lobby or something used to sell paint too, or, or they still do. But um, yeah, they still some of the paint and some of the things you buy are they're different at different places. So everybody yeah, has their absolutely. preference. Um, absolutely. One other question I want to ask you is, how long does it take you to come up with an idea to finish product on a painting? Oh God, uh, that varies. With my commissions, I usually try to be pretty timely. So all in all, from Sketching to finished product to delivery, that may be one to two weeks, depending on what it is. Um, you know, I just did 30 paintings in 30 days. So that was, you know, that was about three hours for painting, which is nuts for me. That is crazy to do a whole painting in three hours. I would say usually I give myself about a week on average from, mm -hmm. from uh, idea, concept to finished product. Okay. Tell us about the last thing you painted. Oh my god, I'm so excited you asked this question today because I actually just finished a pop art portrait of Princess Diana and for the first time I embellished it. I glued over 300 rhinestones and pearl beads on her to make like a crown in her pearl jacket and honestly like I'm so obsessed with it and like I'm so proud of it and I'm looking at it right now and she's smiling down on me and I feel so special and like it's just my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, she she um you know I, i'm holding back a little bit because princess Di I, I i've learned a lot about diana and who she was married to for in the last like four years but like no i, I that's so that's interesting i it's funny too because i just saw you post that on instagram yeah yeah today that's my latest painting wow wow what it so let me ask you something. Okay, what you chose? Why Diana? Out of everyone you've 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 painted, I mean, because some of them I see and I know that they're, where they're from, but I'm like, why did she paint that? You know, like I ask those questions, yeah. and I ask them all the time because to me, I'm real deep about stuff. If I hang something in my right. house, it has to have meaning. I'm not hanging just anything right. in my house. If you walk in my place, I promise you, you're gonna go. This is weird. And I want you to do that because I want you to think, you know, I like, I like people. Right. To think. So, um, right. that's the whole thing. Like that, you know, the, the little thing about thinking to me or, or, or why you own something, you know? Um, right. Exactly. So to, um, to me, the, 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 well, the, the inspiration of, of owning something today is not, there as much as it used to be and i i want to i'm trying to figure out why you know so um well okay i'm actually going to start with that why you know it's because places like home goods and ej max and as much as i love those places you can go and get a generic print on a canvas that looks like an artist put a lot of time and effort to it and somewhere someone did but you know it sucks that People don't want to buy local art and things that took someone a long time. They want to go to home goods and spend twenty dollars on this massive canvas, and that's their idea of art now. You know? Yeah. They can just they can just put that stuff together so easily. But to answer why Diana, um, I don't know if you've seen her Netflix documentary, Diana in her own words, but I watched that at like midnight one night a few weeks ago, and then I became really obsessed with her. Um, also. You know, I had been seeing a therapist for a while to help me with my depression and anxiety. Those are some things I struggle with. And she was like, she was listing for me all these really beautiful, famous, graceful people that were depressed. And she listed Diana as one of them. And I was like, oh, my God, really? And then I watched the documentary and I saw what she had to go through. And I just, you know, she was so beloved and so adored by the entire world. But she had such deep struggles. And I just. That was something that I could, you know, not that I'm adored by the world, but it was something that I could really relate to. And I just, you know, I, I think she's just such a great, such a great pop culture icon in that way because she's so complex. You know, we we see her from the outside and we saw someone that was beautiful and someone that was popular, but she had her own struggles. Yeah. And, 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 I, and look, I, I love it. Everyone does. You know? Right. I mean, 
no one here does not have struggles somehow. I mean, even the person that you think is, oh my God, her pictures are so perfect on Facebook or, or Instagram. Trust me, there's something bothering that person too, or there, there possibly Absolutely. will be in the next three months. Right. <laughs> so you never really are getting out in this, in the life, you know, perfectly, I think. Um, and I, I think that there's, as, as years go by, you know what, we, look, I mean, look at the people that dealt with flooding in, in the last two years here. I mean, that bothered a lot of people, I can assure you. And, and But it also did something where it brought their families probably closer together as a family. So right. even the whole neighborhoods together, I mean, you had neighbors that probably didn't even like each other. They were helping each other, you know, so it, right. you know, it's one of those things, you know, but it's true. It's true. And, and you look at people like, Hey, how does Robin Williams have depression? He makes everybody laugh. Exactly. You know There's nobody making him laugh. Right. So, and, and it's true what they say. Like sometimes the saddest people are the ones that appear the happiest because they spend so much time trying to prevent anyone else from feeling the way that they feel. You're right. And I, that's how they manifest that. I, I get it all the time. People always tell me all the time. Um, when I was younger, they used to say, man, you, 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 you kind of curse a lot. And I look at them and I go, yes, I know. I love to. And they, <laughs> and they go, that's weird. And I go, okay, cool. We won't be hanging out. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Some people just don't get it. I'm I'm not hanging out with anyone that I can't be myself with. And and, and and I try to tone it down a little bit during interviews, but if I feel the need to say a curse word, it's coming out. And now it's a sentence enhancer. It's necessary but, sometimes. But what I'm saying, you know, sometimes it is bad, but 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 not all but but what I'm getting at is now, you know, if it's truly who you are, you need to be that. And that's where I'm at. Exactly. That. It, it, don't be something that you're not, you know? Right. Um, I see it all the time, taking pictures around town and, and, and doing things. When I take a picture of some women, sometimes they look at me and they go, let me see it. And I got to take 55 pictures of the same pose of the same woman because she thinks she doesn't look good. Right. And you should really think about that for a second, you know, to me. So. I mean, it is, it's crazy. It, it really is crazy. Like, yeah, like the way that that has become not so common. Life, you know, just because they make your skin look smooth. I would rather fall yeah. in love with a woman that has a real face than a damn Snapchat filter with some giant eyes that look like Japanese anime. anime. God, yeah, those Snapchat filters are crazy. And yeah. it's just like, it's crazy how many people I see post pictures with the filters. And it's just like, what like do you really think that people believe that that is how you look like what is wrong well, I, with your face and i don't think that's what? the case sometimes but but i mean you know i i, I think sometimes you just got to be real because whenever right. you whenever you post that real photo and it got you know five likes those were the people who really liked you for your value you know exactly what I mean? like the one of you twerking is not valuable Right. I agree. It's just right, it's, and it's and it's just like who's to say that just because five people like that picture that those five people don't matter? Like you're right. Quality of you're quality, right? right? Yeah, like you're right. I I just think people should be a, a little more natural, but that's my, my that's an opinion people don't like to hear. So I agree. But one hundred percent. One of the things that I want to get back to you because we'll talk about okay. this all day. This is like a <laughs> this is like its own podcast going on right now. Um, yeah. Is there a canvas that you prefer? Or do you just yes, want to paint on everything? I mean, I'll paint on anything. Like, I'll paint in a, a loose leaf if I have to. But I prefer the Artist Loft Gallery Wrap Heavy Duty Canvas um, available at Michael's. It's the really, really thick one. However, they're, like, really expensive. And I only buy them when they're 70% off because they're super yeah. pricey. So, but they're the best. Emily's all about the coupon, and she's all about oh, a week. Love for coupons. A project. Love discounts. And it, and well, I'm gonna tell you another thing that you do that, that that's very good. You post on every media. Um, she posts yes. mainly on Instagram, but she if you want to know what she painted or she's going to paint, it's on Instagram. I can assure you. So uh, I mean, yeah, you'll see it everywhere. Yeah, and. We are going to link to that. 
So like we want people to find you however they they feel like they can follow you and 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 do yourself a favor and hit like and and follow it. Don't just go to the page and be like, "Oh, and then forget to like or follow it." You know, people really really care about you following them even though they that you, you feel like they don't. You know, it gives them a, a little bit of extra incentive to 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 do more. Um Absolutely. You know? And it would make me so happy if y'all had followed. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> that's why I'm saying it because, you know, sometimes people go to a place and, you, you know what, if you don't like Diana's, the, the last four pictures she painted, you go back a little ways and check out the rest because you, you, you never know. It's not all flowers and and and, and, and happiness sometimes on, on painting. So, you, you hey, she might right. be in a crazy mood one day, come in and paint Marilyn Manson. You never know. Right. So it's and I think every day. I think that's what's cool about you though, Emily. Like like you, you're you're you know, it's like a roller coaster ride in in paint. And right. But no matter what, it's music involved too. And I think that that's that was I I saw that immediately when I started seeing you post. I was like, dude, you know that's that's cool. Um, you know she's doing exactly what she wants to be doing right then and there. And I thought that was neat. Yeah. So, um. Well, thank. You. It's funny how you can just know that <laughs> by looking at pictures on, on online, but um, I, I I do it all the time, and I'm I'm happy that I can. So yeah, um, but no, I I'm glad we were able to do this. Is there anything else that you want people to know? Huh. Okay, I just want to because we do talk. You know, we just talked about how it doesn't matter how many people like your pictures on Facebook or Instagram, but I do want to take a second to remind people that, you know, Instagram and Facebook and even Twitter, but which I don't use, but these things are more than just social media. They are social networking now. You know, these are businesses. I, I am an artist, but it's also a business. And when you go out of your way to like or comment or follow or someone, like that is helping their business. These are people trying to make a livelihood. So I know a lot of people want to say, oh, well, you know, if I hit follow, that doesn't really do anything for them, but it does. It helps them get exposure. It helps them get business. And it is important in that sense. So I just want to remind people of yeah. that. And it means a lot to people. I'm going to remind them this, too. Um, if, you t if you go in the comment section and you write something about how it may, if you like something, that helps you to kind of know what do I need to keep spending money on, you know, like exactly because those things change all day and night. I mean, if you're not going to if you're not going to if you like something, even if you don't have the money, say, I love this, you know, um, right, because you know what? I mean, 15 people might not like Diana at one show, but you go to another show and it's Diana crazy. So. You know, and, and that's how it is with, with every, any inventory. I call it inventory. But, but like, you know, it's good to know what people are after and what they like. It, um, that is so true. It's important, you know, and it really does make a huge difference in the way that you conduct yourself. And the shows that you choose and the galleries that you choose and, and the festivals that you do, I mean, you're right. It all does change. And I want to know which people like what and where they are. Yeah. I, I look, I bought a piece of, I bought a painting one time. I went to, I think, four, I went to four places, four charity auction places where, where like, they, some people donate stuff. Somebody yeah. painted this picture and donated it to, in, and they, to a place, and they brought it. The woman told me, she says, I don't know what it is. Nobody wants that painting. And I said, which one? She says, this one here. And, and, and I looked at it and they had like no one. What it was gonna happen again? I said that's the painting I want. She cannot understand for the life of me why I bought that painting. She says you bought that painting only because nobody wanted it. I said that's exactly why I bought it. And she said I don't understand. I said well let me explain it to you like this. I said it happens to people too. And she looked at me and she stopped for a second. And she said, it makes a lot of sense when she said that. And I said, well, here's the deal. Everything has value. Everyone, everything, everything that, that, that is out there. And 
I said, I paid 30 bucks for a painting that nobody, everybody overlooked. I said, but here's the thing. In my wall, it's going to remind me that that happened to me at one time. And it's going to make me never right. stop. So, you know, she didn't know what to say. And I said, you know what? If I, if I had to pay 30 bucks for that reminder every day, I said, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do that. So she, at that point, she was like, okay, now I'm, I'm never going to say anything. Now I get it. You know, so um, that's a good example. You know, like people, people don't, don't realize that. And, 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 and right. you may have one painting that stays there. And people are always like, I keep seeing that painting over and over again. She, she needs to get rid of that. You know, be that person that, that, that's more inspired by something Emily painted than, than, than just pick it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. One, I mean, you are absolutely right. It's absolutely. A, um, it makes it, the biggest difference. Yeah. It, 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 there's always a reason for something, you know. Um, right. You know, there really is. So it's. And, 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 and you, hey, don't be afraid to ask Emily, too, why she painted it. Cause yeah, I love I love it, talking to people. I love answering questions. I love, you know, and I want to get your feedback, too. I want to hear your opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. And, Emily, once again, thanks for taking the time to talk to us about this, because I, I know I'm a rambling person sometimes. So, like, <laughs> but no. I, no, I this, this is was great. so fun. This is, like, the most fun thing I've done in a long time. So, thank you yeah, for I having me. I think it, I think it's cool. I think a lot of people are gonna want to know about you. I think a lot of people are gonna want to check out your stuff. And where can they find you your stuff? Do you have a website? Do you have? I know you have a Facebook page and an Instagram for sure. Yes. Well, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Emily Spikes Art. Um, my website is www.emilyspikesart.com. Um, currently, I'm not in any galleries, but on my website, you know, you can always. Schedule a studio visit if you want to, and you know, come see my workspace, come see what I'm up to, and you know, like I said, I'm always down for meeting new people and getting feedback, and you know, seeing how people feel. It's important to me. Cool, cool, and like That's I it. said, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Oh no, thank you for having me. This means the world to me. This is awesome. Okay, bye bye. Bye.